Coffee Break English, Season 2, Episode 9. Hello and welcome back to Coffee Break English. My name's Mark. And my name's Josie. How are you today, Josie? I'm very well, thank you, Mark. And you, how are you? Very well indeed, thank you. Today we are going to Canada. Yes, we're off to Canada and we're going to be talking about a very famous Canadian. Okay, without further ado, let's listen to our text. Hi, Mark. Hi, Josie. This is Ryan, the Coffee Break English Canadian correspondent. Today, I'm going to be telling you about a famous Canadian. Let's begin. When Neil Armstrong landed on the moon in 1969, the world became fascinated with space travel. This interest continues today, partly thanks to Chris Hadfield. Born on 29th August 1959 in Ontario, Canada, Hadfield was interested in flying from a young age. When he watched the first moon landing live on TV, he became obsessed with flight and space travel. And as soon as he could, he joined the Royal Canadian Air Cadets. While he was training there, he got his glider pilot license. He went on to join the Canadian Armed Forces, and while he was working there, he also graduated with an engineering degree. After this, Hadfield became a test pilot, which allowed him to try out new types of aircraft. In 1992, he was accepted into the Canadian astronaut program by the Canadian Space Agency. In 1995, Hadfield flew into orbit for the first time and spent time on the Russian space station Mir. In 2001, he returned to space, this time to the International Space Station. The peak of Hadfield's space career was during his third mission in 2012. He flew into space in 2012 as part of Expedition 34 and then stayed there for the arrival of Expedition 35 in 2013. While he was working on Expedition 35, he was chosen as commander of the International Space Station. He was the first Canadian to hold this important position. Hadfield had a long and successful career as a pilot, and later as an astronaut. He was also devoted to making space knowledge more accessible to the general public. He has written a lot of books about space, and while he was living on the International Space Station, he produced a popular series of educational YouTube videos. Hadfield also loves playing music, and while he was working in space, he created a video of himself playing guitar, which quickly went viral online. When he returned from his third mission, Hadfield retired at the end of an incredible career. He still supports space exploration, and he works hard to inspire the next generation of astronauts and pioneers. Okay, now, I did not know all that information about Chris Hadfield. I've heard of Chris Hadfield, and I remember his video, but that was very interesting to learn more about him. Yes, it was very interesting. You're right. I didn't know half of those things either. Our language point this time is about past tenses. Is that right? Yes, it is. Today we're going to be focusing on a combination of past tenses. So we're going to be looking at when we use the past continuous with the past simple. Okay, let's then look at the text in greater detail. So Josie, could you read each sentence, please? Yes, let's begin. When Neil Armstrong landed on the moon in 1969... 
the world became fascinated with space travel. Okay, this idea of landed, what does to land mean? Yes, so to land, so in this case, this is a verb. If we think of the noun, land, it means to be on the earth, not in the sea, not in the sky. So to land means to come from the sea or the sky onto land. So, for example, when you're in an aeroplane, when the plane hits the land, the ground, it lands. And in this case, Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. So it's a different planet, but it's still land. That's right. In this case, the land, it's the moon. <laughs> okay. Let's continue. This interest continues today, partly thanks to Chris Hadfield. So the world was fascinated with space, and this interest continues today. The world continues to be interested today. And this is partly thanks to Chris Hadfield. Can you tell us about partly? So partly means that this interest continues thanks to Chris Hadfield, but not entirely thanks to him. Okay, that makes sense. Let's continue on. Born on the 29th of August 1959 in Ontario, Canada, Hadfield was interested in flying from a young age. Okay, so he became interested when he was young. That's right. Something interesting to notice here is is about the date when he was born. The 29th of August, 1959. Now, Mark, do you remember how Ryan pronounced this date? I think Ryan said, born on 29th August, 1959. That's right. So in North American English, so US and Canadian English, usually we pronounce the date exactly how it's written without adding any prepositions. But in British English, we say born on the 29th of August. That's good to know. Okay, let's continue. When he watched the first moon landing live on TV, he became obsessed with flight and space travel. And as soon as he could, he joined the Royal Canadian Air Cadets. Okay, We've heard the verb landed. Um, here we've got a moon landing, a noun. That's right. So the moon landing is the noun to describe the event of landing on the moon, of arriving on the moon. Mm -hmm. So he saw the first moon landing live on TV. Yes, so he saw it live. That means that when it was shown on TV, it was shown at the time that it was actually happening. So it wasn't recorded before. Everyone was watching it as it happened. Good. And he became obsessed with flight and space travel. What does obsessed mean? Yes, obsessed means very interested. So Mark, what are you obsessed with? I am obsessed with learning languages. What about you, Josie? Well, I was going to say the same thing. So you've <laughs> stolen my obsession there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'll say then I'm obsessed with Scandinavian music. Ah, like ABBA, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And others too. Anyway, let's continue. Okay. While he was training there, he got his glider pilot license. Okay, this is interesting. First of all, what is a glider? Well, as far as I know, a glider is a plane that is not powered by fuel, but only by the wind. So there's no gas, no petrol in the plane. So maybe it's smaller and easier to fly. Okay, So he got his glider license, his permission to fly a glider plane. That's right. 
And here as well, we have the first example of our language point today. While he was training there, he got his glider pilot license. So was training, which tense, which verb form is this, Mark? This is a past continuous. It is ongoing. He was training. When he was training there, something else happened. That's right. So while he was training, he got his glider pilot license. So was training, that's a longer action in the past. And got, that's a shorter action. And when we use these tenses together, we are showing that they happen at the same time. Good. So he was training, and while he was training, he got his pilot license. Good. One more thing about the structure of the past continuous. Was training, we use was or were, so that's the verb be in the past simple tense. And we add to this the gerund form or the ing form of the verb. So we're adding ing to the end of the main form of the verb. Yes. Good. Let's continue on. He went on to join the Canadian Armed Forces. And while he was working there, he also graduated with an engineering degree. Okay, we're seeing another example of this past continuous being interrupted by the simple past. Absolutely. So he was working there for a long time. That's the longer action. And he graduated. That's a slightly shorter action. It's worth noticing as well, in both of these phrases, we're using the word while. While he was training and while he was working. What does while mean here, Mark? It's like during the time. That's right. So it shows us that these actions are happening at the same time. Yes. Good. Now, there's one other word I wanted to mention in this sentence. It starts, he went on to join the Canadian Armed Forces. Can you tell us more about to go on to do something? Yeah, so to go on to do something means to do something next, usually in your life or in your career. Mm -hmm. So, for example, for me, I could say, I went to university and then I went on to teach English. Next, I taught English. Okay, that makes sense. To go on to do something. Yes. Okay, let's continue. After this, Hadfield became a test pilot, which allowed him to try out new types of aircraft. In 1992, he was accepted into the Canadian Astronaut Programme by the Canadian Space Agency. OK, so we are hearing the next stages of Hadfield's career. Yes, it's a very busy career so far. Indeed. And next... In 1995, Hadfield flew into orbit for the first time and spent time on the Russian space station Mir. What does orbit mean, Josie? Mm, orbit is quite a difficult one to explain. Um, to orbit something, it means to, to go around something. So, for example, the Earth orbits the sun. The Earth goes around the sun. But in this case... Hadfield flew into orbit. So to fly into orbit means to go onto a path of orbit where the spacecraft will eventually go around something. Okay, that's quite technical, quite scientific. <laughs> it is. To be honest, I don't understand it so well. So, <laughs> Well, you're not here for the science. You're here for the English like I am. It's all good. Good. Hopefully our listeners will understand better than we do. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Let's continue on. Okay. So next, in 2001, he returned to space, this time to the International Space Station. So here we're seeing another date, the year 2001. 
But I think Ryan said this slightly differently. He did. He said in 2001. Why is that? That's because he's from Canada. So usually in North American English, in years such as this, in the 2000 years, they can say 2001, whereas in British English, we would say in 2001. Okay, so in 2001, Chris Hadfield had his own space odyssey. Yes, the peak of Hadfield's space career was during his third mission in 2012. We can hear that same idea again, 2012 in British English, but I think Ryan said 2012. That's right. There's also a third way we could pronounce this, isn't there? That's right. I think we could say 2012. Yes, exactly. Can you tell us about the peak of Hadfield's career? Yes, so a peak is literally the the top of a mountain. It's the top of something. So in this case, the peak of his space career is the high point, the best point of his career. Okay, great. Let's continue on. Okay. He flew into space in 2012 as part of Expedition 34, and then stayed there for the arrival of Expedition 35 in 2013. While he was working on Expedition 35, he was chosen as commander of the International Space Station. Right, we heard another while there. While he was working on Expedition 35, he was chosen. Now, this is interesting because we've got was in both situations, in both parts of the sentence. That's right. And the reason for that is the first was, was working. This is, of course, part of the past continuous. But the second one, he was chosen. This is the past simple, but it is the past simple passive form. Exactly. So he was working. That's the past of the verb to be with the gerund, working, and then was chosen. Chosen is not choosing, it's chosen. So which part of the verb is that? Good. This is the past participle. Excellent. And also in this sentence, he was chosen as commander of the International Space Station. What's a commander, Mark? A commander is someone who commands or someone who leads. So he was the leader of the space station. That's right. Absolutely. And it seems that he was the first Canadian who took that role. Yes, he was the first Canadian to hold this important position. So quite an honour for him. Absolutely. OK, we're going to take a short break there. We will be back in just a moment to find out a little more about Chris Hadfield. Each episode of the Coffee Break English podcast is free and you can use our podcast to help you improve your English. But there's more. That's right. We have a full course available on our website, which will help you make faster progress and understand everything much better. For every lesson, we offer videos, bonus audio recordings, lesson notes with exercises, and vocabulary lists in lots of languages. All this is available on the Coffee Break Academy, so visit coffeebreakacademy.com. Welcome back. Today we are talking about Chris Hadfield, a Canadian space explorer. Let's continue on with our text, Josie. OK. Hadfield had a long and successful career as a pilot and later as an astronaut. OK, what does successful mean? Well, successful means to have success in something. 
So it's when you accomplish or when you do something that you have worked very hard for. Okay, so he worked hard to become a pilot and then he worked hard to become an astronaut. Absolutely. And he was also devoted to making space knowledge more accessible to the general public. Okay, devoted is an interesting word. Yes, so be devoted to something means to be committed to something, to spend a lot of time doing something. So maybe our listeners are devoted to learning English. That's right. Or you could be devoted to a person too. Absolutely. So if you are a mother or a father, you are devoted to your children. Okay. In Chris Hadfield's case, he was devoted to making space knowledge more accessible to the general public. Can we talk about the word accessible? Yes. So accessible, it comes from the verb to access. In this case, it means that this space knowledge is easier to understand, easier to find for the general public, for people in general. Okay, let's continue. He has written a lot of books about space, and while he was living on the International Space Station, he produced a popular series of educational YouTube videos. Okay, we can see another while he was doing something, he did something. Let's look at this more cl- more closely. Absolutely. So while he was living on the International Space Station, as we have learnt, he was living there for quite a long time. And he produced a series of educational YouTube videos. So these videos, the production of them was a shorter action than the living on the International Space Station. Exactly. Okay, let's continue on. Hadfield also loves playing music. And while he was working in space, he created a video of himself playing guitar, which quickly went viral online. So here was another example of while he was doing something, he did something. Let's take a look at this. Exactly. So while he was working in space, it's a similar idea to the previous example. He was working in space for a couple of years and he created a video of himself in a shorter action. Okay. So this video went viral. What does that mean? Yes. So to go viral, this expression comes from the word virus. So a virus is like an illness which spreads very quickly from person to person, like the flu, for example. So if a video goes viral, it spreads very quickly and therefore lots of people will see it. Exactly. It's a similar kind of idea. Indeed. Okay, let's continue. When he returned from his third mission... Hadfield retired at the end of an incredible career. He still supports space exploration, and he works hard to inspire the next generation of astronauts and pioneers. Okay, some interesting words in there. Yes, so we have exploration, which comes from the verb to explore. And what does explore mean, Mark? So to explore means to look around to discover things. For example, if you visit a new city, you may want to explore it to find nice places to visit. Exactly, exactly. In this case, though, we're not exploring a new city. He's exploring space, space exploration. Indeed. There is also a nice word, pioneer. What does that mean? Yes, so pioneer, this is very linked with um, exploration because a pioneer is somebody who does something first. So this is often used when we're talking about exploring new places or maybe discovering new countries. So can you think of any famous pioneers, Mark? Well, for example, in the field of science, we could say that Marie Curie was a pioneer 
in radioactivity. Absolutely, yes. OK, it's time now to listen again to the text. So over to you, Ryan. When Neil Armstrong landed on the moon in 1969, the world became fascinated with space travel. This interest continues today, partly thanks to Chris Hadfield. Born on 29th August 1959 in Ontario, Canada, Hadfield was interested in flying from a young age. When he watched the first moon landing live on TV, he became obsessed with flight and space travel. And as soon as he could, he joined the Royal Canadian Air Cadets. While he was training there, he got his glider pilot license. He went on to join the Canadian Armed Forces. And while he was working there, he also graduated with an engineering degree. After this, Hadfield became a test pilot, which allowed him to try out new types of aircraft. In 1992, he was accepted into the Canadian astronaut program by the Canadian Space Agency. In 1995, Hadfield flew into orbit for the first time and spent time on the Russian space station Mir. In 2001, he returned to space, this time to the International Space Station. The peak of Hadfield's space career was during his third mission in 2012. He flew into space in 2012 as part of Expedition 34 and then stayed there for the arrival of Expedition 35 in 2013. While he was working on Expedition 35, he was chosen as commander of the International Space Station. He was the first Canadian to hold this important position. Hadfield had a long and successful career as a pilot, and later as an astronaut. He was also devoted to making space knowledge more accessible to the general public. He has written a lot of books about space, and while he was living on the International Space Station, he produced a popular series of educational YouTube videos. Hadfield also loves playing music, and while he was working in space, he created a video of himself playing guitar, which quickly went viral online. When he returned from his third mission, Hadfield retired at the end of an incredible career. He still supports space exploration, and he works hard to inspire the next generation of astronauts and pioneers. Okay, that's it for today's text. We hope that you've learned lots about past continuous and uh, past simple verbs. Yes, and I've certainly learnt a lot about Chris Hadfield, so I hope you all have too. If you would like to take your Coffee Break English experience to the next level, then why not visit the Coffee Break Academy, where you can find the full course for this episode and indeed the whole series. We have additional materials to help you get more out of each text. Just visit coffeebreakacademy.com. That's right, Mark. And if you'd like to practice your English, you can also do so on social media. Just search for Coffee Break English on Facebook and on Instagram, where we post regular language challenges and cultural information. We'll be back soon with another text for you. But for now, thank you and goodbye. See you next time. You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radiolingua Network. Copyright 2021 Radiolingua Limited. Recording copyright 2021 Radiolingua Limited. All rights reserved.